We're right on time. Uh, so this is perfect. <clears throat> uh, so uh, Andre Cusid is founder and CEO of Miro, the leading whiteboarding platform for team collaboration. Uh, Andre founded Miro in 2011. And prior to Miro, Andre was the founder of Vitamin Group, a digital production and marketing agency. Andre, welcome to the Remote Startup Expo. <clears throat> Excited to be here. Uh, really enjoy the experience. Uh, yeah, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so at this point, I'd love to invite you to introduce yourself and, and Miro. And I know you have a video you'd like to share. Um, feel free to share that, you know, intro yourself and share that uh, in a time that makes sense, or I can share it, whatever works for you. Yeah, it would be great if you can share the video also, and then I can share sure. it. Yeah, specific. So the video shows uh, the product. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll get that going. Uh, but yeah, why don't you just say hi to everybody and yeah, uh, kind of hi everyone. So I'm happy to be here. Um, I, I'm excited to share our story and um, how we how we build the product and um, our aspirations for for few. Um, yeah, so um, let's show the the video. Yeah, cool. So okay, here we go. Here. Oops. Uh, let me just try a different way. Location window. Yeah, while you are playing off the video, so I can give yeah. a couple. Couple. It's okay. I've got another um, one going. Okay. Here, here we go. Okay. Cool. Oops. So yeah, there is no sound. Like okay, I can I can uh, explain what's going on on the screen. So Mira is an online uh, whiteboarding platform that allows people to collaborate in real time visually. Okay. And um, sorry. Sorry, was that really not working? I thought I, I thought I was showing the video, but why, why don't you just go ahead? No, no, it doesn't work now. Yeah, but Mirror is like a whiteboarding online platform that allows people to collaborate in real time, like they sit <clears> in the same room. So we developed the product uh, uh, for like last eight years, and uh, the 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 vision for the company and for the product was to live in the world where people can co-create regardless of the location they are sitting. And this mission uh, and vision became more than uh, like critical uh, these days. So we're joking internally that we finally found product market fit with the product. So when everyone starts to work from home, it's like a critical piece in, in the collaboration set. Um, so we, we, we grow pretty fast. We, we have 5 million uh, users today. And we, ju we just landed um, in a new round, round B. Today was announced uh, on TechCrunch. So we raised 50 million for the next phase of Mira. Wow. And yeah, we, we're really, yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's just like it, it went out like two hours ago. <laughs> so it was uh, really hot news. And, Good timing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good. So uh, um, uh, for, for us, it, it's super important because the vision is to build a visual communication piece. Uh, that works together with instant messaging and with um, video communication tools like Zoom, and instant messaging tools like Slack, so to get, to add the third piece of a uh, visual uh, platform. So that's, that's shortly about the company. That's shortly about you know, what we're doing these days. Yeah. Great, great. I'm just going to try this one more time. Uh, yeah, sorry, we're having trouble with that. But um, wonderful. Why, why don't we jump into the, the Q&A? Um, <clears throat> This is this is kind of what was on my mind. Like, bear in mind for for everybody, you started this in 2011, right? And so, come to think, come, you know, come, come to speak about uh, founders who have or are visionaries who have been thinking about this for kind of remote work collaboration space um, for a long time. My question for you is: You probably had some like early use cases in mind when you started the company, um, yeah. but I'm curious, like, what have been some of the surprising use cases? customer segments or, or industries to leverage Miro that you didn't expect? Yeah, that's a great question. So we started as a B2C company. So in the first version of Miro, you can uh, drop your friends for Facebook or from Google Plus uh, to the board and start collaborate with them like and draw together. So that was more a B2C positioning. We thought about like the broad uh, number of use cases. And the idea was just to bring the whiteboard into a browser, very simple. And a whiteboard is something that everyone can benefit from. So with the first use cases, we saw so many different things. So it's like uh, people map out their traveling plans. People start to think about their uh, kind of internal home apartment design. Like um, uh, people, people uh, just uh, did kind of mapping out their like family tree. So like there were so many different things that <laughs> we really, we really 
uh, found out like that we didn't expect. But at the same time, we, we saw that there are a lot of use cases that are uh, related to the productivity, to the like the some business outcomes you can get out of the whiteboard. And we, we decided to focus our product around those use cases. We, st we decided to build a B2C to B product where the end user is coming and like find the value for he or she on, or and their team, and then grow into like a bigger bigger communication collaboration across the company. So that that's the that's the story, and that's our some some uh, fun 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 examples of first boards we saw. Absolutely. Um, I, I'd also love to ask you about uh, the evolution of Miro, uh, and you've talked about this before, but moving from a product to a platform. And I'm curious, like, what were some of the key whether it was like commercial tactics or or technical like innovations um, that helped that helped uh, complete that transition. Yeah, so that, that's a great question. So for 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 us, uh, the major challenge is a technical challenge because it's really hard to build um, a visual platform because you have so many different extensions on the platform that you can build. You can build on top of the platform. You can build plugins. You can build like add-ons, widgets. You can embed Mira into any other tool. So we have the API for our iframe. Uh, so there are so many different kind of uh, different challenges, technical challenges, and also um, implementation that I can use. And you have to prioritize, like, wh what should be the first version? What should be the second? What, what should be the third? And also, it's like you need to design it from the technical standpoint, really thoughtful, because um, like there's ten, there are nine out of 10 ways to do it wrong. And one way to do it right, so you have to think about like how to do it right. And I, I mean, it's like it's never-ending process. We we started to transition to a platform, I would say, in 2016, and uh, we have like a, a good amount of uh, like API scope today. But we understand that this is a long journey. It will take us next several years to uh, build a fully robust platform that we're envisioning in the future. So that that's that's a short story about that. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're we're excited to to follow you on that journey. Um, yeah, I guess you know I'm, I guess I'm going to ask everybody this, uh, but uh, I'd love for you to just tell me a little bit about how like the last few months have been for you, how coronavirus has affected your business um, internally, externally. What what have been yeah. your experiences? Yeah, so we're <laughs> in a pretty position. So uh, our business um, is fully manageable from like homes and. We are in that like spot where uh, we, we can solve the problem. Yeah, so the coronavirus came and creates a lot of problems for companies, for um, for employees, for uh, for groups of people. But we are in a spot of solving those problems, and of course, uh, we experienced a lot of growth initially, and like currently, it's continued to happen. We were not like fully ready for that. So I mean, like what we expected to happen by the end of the year started to happen like. As the same day, so our infrastructure capacity was like not planned for that type of growth. It was like a pretty hard couple couple weeks. The team was working, and they they did an amazing job. I mean, like we served everyone. There were no like really kind of meaningful uh, downtimes. There were like very small, like one one downtime for twenty minutes along like the months and a half. So I mean, like that was a really great job done by the team. And now we expand our capacity moving forward. So. Uh, from the business perspective, we, as I said, like we grow, like we landed uh, around a um, million uh, users um, in, in the last several weeks. Um, so, wow. which is amazing. Yeah, we were a living platform. Um, and right. it's like Zoom, you know, where, when you have like something that is really, is really um, built out, uh, people know about it, you have some mini brand or like in zoom case a big brand so it it, it amplified by this thing so and in our case it, it just amplified the, the the investment we were doing like in last several years and um from from the perspective of like uh the team uh, we did a lot of change management in the company we 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 saw a shift in the use case uh that people uh find our platform most important these days we did a lot of pre-prioritization on the engineering side, on the product side, um, and on the go-to-market side as well. So to make sure we are addressing the pain of the market and to make sure we are ser uh, serving the needs uh, that our customers have. Um, and our mission as a company is to empower teams to create the next big thing. And we were really, really happy to see that uh, like 
there were several uh, accelerators, incubators, uh, companies who are fighting COVID. They came to us and asked for um, for support from Miraside. It's like to, and we provided them our tools. So, for example, uh, there is a big COVID accelerator or a big hackathon for COVID in Europe, and they all run on Miro today. And that's where our mission comes true, is to empower teams to create the next big thing. So because we believe that like, if someone uh, or some team fight this, uh, this challenge we all struggle with, that will be the next big thing. And we are really proud to, to, be, to support this. Also, we gave our product for all educational institutions for free, as Zoom did and as uh, some other companies did. So to support the remote education. And you can also imagine that the whiteboard in, in, in that space is also a big thing. So so we 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 are really proud that we can help like um, uh, students and uh, teachers and tutors like to go through this time uh, because um, we don't want the world stop and we 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 yeah we we, we enable the continuity of the world these days. So that's that's really <laughs> happened in in last several uh, weeks <laughs> and on top we was in the round so yeah that was on top. <laughs> <laughs> wow wow what a wild few months for you i mean yeah that's the thing i keep hearing from uh from, from remote uh startups is is this is an industry that's proving to be anti-fragile um to you know this this crisis and then probably future crises um the other thing i wanted to ask you uh in the last few minutes here is uh, just this might be a tough question, but um, where do you see kind of the future of remote going in, in kind of the mid term or the you know mid to long term, and and what role do you think Miro will play in that future? Yeah, it's a great question. So I believe that the world will be waking like the world world will be not the same like as we know it before the crisis. So I, I, I I'm sure that um, a lot of companies will discover this way to work um, uh, fully remote or partially remote. I don't personally believe that there will be a fully remote setup for a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. I more believe in a, a hybrid model where um, companies will have hubs and uh, some employees will be allowed to work from home like several days a week or a month. And that, that will be a mixed model because we, we are all humans and we still need to hang out together. And I'm sure this is a great technology. Remo is like, uh, looks like a great product. And uh, it, it, we, we truly can benefit from this type of technology and from this product. But I'm sure we will all um, get back to also real conferences where we can just uh, see each other in person, uh, have some drinks or like have, have like uh, in-depth discussion. So I think that uh, this is our new reality. It will be a mixed well, it's like mixed reality, I would say, where uh, some things we can do like remotely or virtually like we do today and uh, some things we still want to do offline. We as a mirror, we like we're also in an interesting position because that was our vision for a long time. We were building this um, hubs across the globe. We have five offices. We have 300 people across the globe and five offices. Two of them are in Europe and three of them are